Uh, it up. John in Chicago, how are you? Hey, what's up, guys? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Can, can you hear, hear us? Hey, how's it going? Hey, nice beard, Matt. Good to see you. Thanks. You, well, I can't see you, so I can't say you too. Hey, yeah, obviously. So what's yeah. up? What's on your mind? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> sorry, the last time I called, um, I got cut off. You hung up on me. and um, I did? Yeah, Matt did, yes. Okay. When was this? Say that again? W when was this call? Oh, it was a few months ago, man. I haven't called in in a while. I figured okay. I'd give you time give you time to calm down after my last call. <laughs> but uh, Well, I apologize for not remembering it, but um, be prepared. <laughs> anyway, yeah. what's up? What's up? Nothing much, man. I guess uh, what's on my mind today is um, I guess I wanted to ask you, what is your take on atheism being a religion uh, no different than theism other than what you believe. Well, is theism a religion? Well, it's a religious belief in my opinion, yes. Hmm. I, I don't see that. I see theism as the overarching category of belief, you know, you believe in a, a God, a God exists. But theism itself isn't a religion. Instead, theism uh, contains a whole bunch of different religious groups that are religions. So I don't, I don't see that theism itself is a religion. It's a single position on a single issue. Uh, neither theism nor atheism have tenets or dogma or rituals or any of the sort of things that you would expect uh, to qualify as a religion. Yeah, I, you know, and the word religion also implies some kind of a practice, and among theists that would be like a, a form of organized worship, like you choose your God and then you have your worship services and your rituals and your prayers and whatever. That's, that's religion there. It's perfectly possible to believe that a God exists, but not be religious. You, you know, don't pray, you don't go to any churches, you don't go to any synagogues, you don't uh, have any rituals that you perform. You just say, oh, yeah, there's probably God up there, sure, why not? But and, apart and, from that, you don't care and you go about your life. And likewise, um, while atheism itself isn't a religion and, and doesn't include the, the general trappings of religion, that doesn't mean that there aren't atheists who could be religious or that doesn't mean that you couldn't um, begin with atheism and then glom on a bunch of stuff to it and create something that is, uh, you know, re religious of some nature or another. But atheism itself is not. But there, there's uh, the religion of Buddhism is a religion that has no gods. So technically that you could call that an atheistic religion. So again, it's like, so atheism and theism are the umbrellas and then whether you're religious or not all exists under that. And, and that's your choice. But well, just being an atheist or just being a theist does not imply that you are religious. Well, um, the theistic belief and the atheistic beliefs, well, they are both beliefs, and neither one are empirically proven. No, actually, one yeah, of them that's... is a rejection of a belief. You know, atheism is not necessarily the belief that there are no gods. It is the rejection of the claim that there are gods. So there's, well, a, th there's well, a difference. There's a difference between I do not believe a god exists and I believe no gods exist. Those are two different things. Well, I don't. I don't agree with that. Well, I, mean, couldn't, I can. Couldn't. Okay. Is there a difference between I'm not convinced that the plaintiff or that the defendant is guilty and I am convinced that they are innocent? Is there no difference between those two? Well, look at. Uh, I, I asked a question. We're, we're trying to, I asked a question. Yeah. Is there no difference between I'm not convinced that the plaint that the defendant is guilty and I am convinced that the plaint that the defendant is innocent? Is there no difference between those two? Well, if you're not convinced that he's innocent, then you're more convinced that he's guilty. Okay, you, you, you heard guilty yeah. when I said not guilty. See, juries don't say anything about innocence. They address the issue of guilt, and they either conclude. That, the, that they're convinced that the defendant is guilty, or they are convinced, or they, they are not convinced that the defendant is guilty, in which case they vote not guilty. But the fact that they're voting not guilty doesn't mean that they are convinced that he's innocent. Well, that would mean that they're more convinced that he's well, innocent. Not, not, well, not really. Let me, let me give you an example. Like, take somebody like O.J., right? Okay, now, yeah. O.J. was acquitted of two murders, right? Right. He would, but... Was he acquitted because maybe some people believe he's innocent, but a lot of people, if you talk to them, they'll say, I think O.J. is extremely guilty, but the problem is 
the prosecution didn't make a good case. And so based on the evidence, the jury had to find him not guilty. So it doesn't mean that they think he was innocent of the murders. It just means that the evidence that they got and the case they were presented didn't allow them to give them a, give a guilty verdict. They had to find him not guilty. Not or, guilty. Um, not guilty is, idiots. Yeah, well, there's right. that too. But what, I'm just trying to distinguish. Yeah. Not yeah. guilty. Not guilty doesn't mean you think innocent. Not guilty simply means you didn't make your case. So in the case of theism versus atheism, and I, I can't speak for other atheists because I'll tell you right now, there are a lot of atheists in the world, or maybe, I don't know, a lot, but there are atheists in the world who would say, yeah, I am convinced that no God absolutely exists and here's why. But my personal opinion, all I can say is, you religious believer haven't made your case to me. I'm not saying that nothing that could possibly be called a God could ever possibly exist, but what I am saying is that I don't believe in your God because your case wasn't made. Enough so for you, me to so, be convinced. So back to the original question, because I said that not believing in God is not the same as believing there are no gods. Are you okay with that now, or do you still reject I mean, that? Do, do, you, do you get what we're trying to explain to you? I get, I get completely what you're saying. And okay. 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 So Move on. All right. From another side, um, there are only two choices here. Yes. Either there is a God or there isn't. Correct. And for and me to say, well, I could say theism is just a rejection of atheism. If no, that's okay. so, no, no, because no, no. atheism is not the assertion that no gods exist. So, then why aren't you an agnostic instead of an atheist? Because, okay, first of all, how do you know I'm not? See, agnosticism and atheism aren't mutually exclusive. One addresses what you believe and the other addresses what you know or claim to know. Yeah. So the reason theism isn't the rejection of atheism is that atheism is not the assertion of a positive position for theists to reject. The claim is some God exists. If you believe that, you're a theist. If you do not believe that, you're an atheist. But don't you have to believe either way? No. Did no, we you just don't. cover this? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Again, do you have to believe that O.J. is absolutely innocent simply to accept, here, to believe that he's not guilty? Let, let's go back. There's, There's a video on my personal YouTube channel that uses a bubblegum analogy. So I've got a jar of, on my desk of, of uh, gumballs. Now, the number of gumballs in that jar is either even or odd, correct? Correct. Those are the only possibilities. Correct. So if I say to you, the number of gumballs in the jar is even, do you believe me? I would have to be agnostic about it. No, I, that's not what I asked. I asked, did you, do you believe me? I have no grounds to believe or disbelieve. Well, no, no, no. Yes, you do have grounds. See, every claim has to be proven. Here's the thing. If I say the number of gumballs is even, do you actually believe me? Are you convinced that the number of gumballs is even? Just based on his That's it. statement Are of Are you convinced that the number of gumballs is even? No, you cannot be convinced. Okay. okay. Now, yeah. now, you're not convinced. Does that mean that you are convinced that the number is odd? Not necessarily. Correct. Not. There, you and got so it. And so this is exactly the same. Theists have made the claim that the number of gumballs is even. That equates to some God exists. I do, not, I do not believe that. I reject that that claim is true. But that does not mean that I accept the opposite. Well, what do you base your rejection on? That it hasn't met the burden of proof. The same reason you rejected my assertion that the number of gumballs is even. You don't have enough information to confirm it sufficiently to justify belief. Right. Well, right. To, my, to my point, it would seem that you can't assert either way with certainty neither atheism nor theism so uh, why no 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 not not neither atheism nor theism you're you're confusing things it's atheism and theism are what you believe about one claim that a god exists they have nothing to do with what you believe about the other claim that no gods exist yeah so you see you keep putting theism in in the number of gumballs is false and that's not the accurate assessment the accurate assessment is that atheism mm -hmm. is that the number of gumballs is not True, it is not even. It's not been confirmed to be even. We do not believe that yeah. it's even. Yeah. Again, it's, right. I, I don't believe that there is an even number of gumballs in the jar. It's not the same thing as I do believe and I firmly believe 
that there are an odd number of gumballs in the jar. And well, the, 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 the mistake, for and well, no, no, the mistake that the mistake you're making is that when you try to to draw the analogy between the you look at the gumball analogy and you try to apply it to theism and atheism, you're making the the basic mistake of thinking that the atheist position is the positive claim that there are an odd number of gumballs. It's not. It's simply atheism is the atheist is simply the person who says the guy who's claiming that the number of gumballs are even hasn't made his case. Right? Well, and so would gets, so get, would agnosticism, they would say that there's not enough no, evidence. No, because, agnostic, because agnosticism can go either way. Again, agno no, as, as Matt said, agnosticism doesn't have to do with what a person believes. It has to do with what you claim to know. I've met Christians who are agnostic, okay? Practicing Christians, church-going Christians. They'll tell me right to my face, I don't. I can't tell you that I know for a fact that God exists. I can't prove it. I can't give you hard proof. I believe it with all my heart, but I know that I can't. I can't look at you in the eye and give you the proof and say, "Here, I know that this is true." So uh, that's an agnostic. We, we just need to drop the term agnostic from this entire discussion yeah. because it is irrelevant. Yeah. There, it, you either believe the claim or you do not believe the claim. There is no middle ground. Yeah. Okay. So and, let's follow that. To its logical conclusion, I'd love if, to. if there's only two choices, either yes. the world was created or somehow emerged or created itself, those are only two options. Well, I don't know that that's even. Uh, yeah, I don't know that that's. Uh, yeah, see, again, that's you, a, you have to use a direct negation. Either the world was created by an intelligent being, or it was not created by an intelligent being. Those are the only two possibilities. Yeah. Right. Okay. I, I agree. And, and if you say that it was not created by an intelligent being, or if you say that you don't believe it was created by an intelligent being, you're not making a statement about how you do think it was created. You're only saying, I don't think that that explanation for the creation was right. But anyway, go on but with your go point. On. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, it boils down to only two choices at the end. All semantics aside, it is either it was or it wasn't. Now, if you reject one claim, or assertion or belief that it was or wasn't, then you are only left with the other unless you claim agnosticism, what? which is okay. not know either way. Okay, stop. If you reject that the number of gumballs is even, are you only left with odd? No. You're left with I don't know, and that's why you keep going back to agnosticism, which is, entire, right. which is entirely, as I've pointed out, irrelevant because it, it addresses what you know. I do not believe the number of gumballs is even. I do not believe that a God exists. That tells you nothing about whether or not I believe the number of gumballs is odd or whether I believe that there is no God. Yeah. We're okay. only addressing a single prong of the claim. There are two possible things. The universe was created by a God or the universe was not created by a God. Those are the only two possibilities because they are direct logical negations. But when we're constructed, okay, well, but, but, but hang on, John, it, hang John, on. John, but when we're talking about what we believe, we only address a single prong at a time because you, it, is, it creates logical inconsistencies if you try to address both prongs. That is why syllogisms are constructed by statements and not questions. Was it God or not God? You, you will never get a syllogism that has that in there. Instead, what you have is a premise, some God created the universe, and you address that premise in the, in the argument there. You don't get to or start from questions. So you can't begin, get, start from or end with multiple prongs. And the problem that keeps popping up, and, that, and, if, <laughs> and if we sound frustrated here, this, it keeps popping up, and we don't know why it's so hard to, to clarify people on this. Knowledge claims and belief claims are two separate categories. And people always want to conflate. Well, they're nested. Uh, well, they're nested. But N knowledge the, is a subset of belief. But at the same time, what you claim to know or don't know has, does not have any, necessarily have anything to do with what you believe or claim to believe. As I pointed out, well, it, it, I, it have met, I have met theistic agnostics. I have met theists who tell sure. me, I don't know, but I believe. So, so that's a person, that, that's a distinction. It's, not, it's a non-trivial distinction. So, so John, let me say this. You said if you're, you're left with either the opposite or agnosticism, fine. I'm an agnostic. What's your point? Yeah, I mean, well, I'll, I'll admit right now I'm, an, I, I, I'm agnostic too. Okay. And I'm also an atheist, by the way. Yes. I, I get what you mean. You're an atheist towards certain claims about God. I understand that. No, well, I'm an atheist. Specific. Well, uh, all right, never mind. Go ahead. 
Well, let's be more specific, okay? Um, going to the DNA molecule, which is the dictator of life, there are only two choices on how that came about. Either it was an accident no. or it was intended. Well, no, it was either an accident or it wasn't an accident. That's, that's why we get back to direct well, logical. Yeah, and, no. John, John, stop. Everything, if you're going to say there's only two choices, they'd better damn well be direct logical negations. Otherwise, oh, yeah. otherwise, if you use any other language, any sloppy language, you are now constructing what is possibly a false dichotomy. You need to say either it was an accident or it was not an accident, because those are direct logical negations. Either it was constructed by a god or it was not constructed by a god. Those are direct logical negations. You have to use that language. Right. Yeah. Okay. But okay. Either, it, yeah, either it was constructed by a god or it was an accident are not logical negations. Well, <clears throat> the opposite of accident is intended or... or um... No, the opposite of accident is not an accident. Now, there is a context. It, 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 see, here, here's the thing. Is true and false as two options? Is that a true dichotomy? Are those direct logical negations? Well, let's be specific here. It, I, I'm asking, it, okay. There are two possibilities, somebody says. Either it's true or it's false. Is that an example of a direct logical negation? Not necessarily, but Good. we have to be specific okay. on what we're talking about. Right. Well, there we but go. But if you say it's true or not true, that is a direct logical negation. Well, then let's examine the evidence. Well, if, we if can't DNA examine the evidence until we... Information, John. we know that information can only come John, from... John, yeah. we can't examine the evidence until we get to some kind of grounding on what the actual claim is and how we're going to go about addressing it. And so well, far... That's what I'm trying to get to. I'm trying to get to the specifics of what, what is the claim. About. We all agree that life is here. Life had to get here somehow. Okay, there's only really two honest, uh, honestly, only two explanations. Either I got a the DNA molecule was intended with a purpose in a design, or it somehow emerged naturalistically. Now we know that information. Information in DNA is a tough obstacle to overcome naturalistically. Why? Because there's no natural mechanism that can create and encode. Is there? Do, we, do you know that? How do you know that? Yeah. Well, it's not only is it common sense, I mean... No, 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 no. we don't get to say common sense because I don't agree with your assertion. How do you know what you're well, claiming? I, we know that information only comes from an intelligent source, a mind. Do how you, do you know that? Do you know that? Yeah. Because every scientific and how how are you and how are you defining information? Information simply means uh, a message that can be communicated. Uh, 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 basically, yeah, a message that can be communicated between a sender and a receiver. It's different than a pattern or or. And so, a, and so this has uh, what to do with. For example, biological mechanisms. Well, because biological if you're, mechanisms if, if, if you're, are dictated by the information in DNA. Yeah, this is an entirely chemical, natural process. Well, no, 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 I don't think so at all. It's well, then you're wrong. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You're asserting I'm wrong based on what? There has been no demonstration that anything other than naturalistic processes is involved, and a yeah. demonstration that naturalistic processes are sufficient to do this DNA uh, reproduction. So you're saying there's scientific evidence that the information code in DNA arose naturally? Well, I've, all of the evidence so far points to a naturalistic solution, not only being well, not only person. being not only being sufficient. Well, go ahead. Uh, that's just your that's just your assertion. No, uh, it's well, John, not. John, here, here. Let me, let me, let me help. Let me sort this of lead, let help. me kind of lead you through this uh, very briefly, and then we may have to go on. It's but, a bad idea. Yeah. All right. For you, you keep saying the scientific this and that. Okay. For your claim to be scientifically valid, it has to withstand what's called falsifiability. You know what that means in science? Of course. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, well. I could ask you to explain it, but we'll just move on. All right. What, 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 to. okay, well, the thing is, if, what would you expect to see? What do you think we would expect to see in biology in nature if DNA and the message in DNA were not 
actually the product of an intelligent, purposeful mind. Yeah, we're, off, mind. we're off track and we let him yeah. off the hook. You yeah. said that it's impossible for information to arrive, to arrive without an intelligent source. How did you reach that conclusion? Because to me, it reeks of argument from ignorance. Yeah. It's not an argument from ignorance. It's okay. an argument based on what we know. We well, know, we I, know I, that. And I'm trying to get uh, to how you know this came from. A, this had to have come from. A no, source. I want to know how you know that it's impossible for this to happen without a guiding intelligence. That's the that's the assertion you've made. Mm -hmm. Is that it is not possible for this to occur, and that sort of broad universal negative is one where I would very much like to know how do you justify that. And that's why I'm asking you about falsifiability. I'm trying to get okay, to how you know it would have been impossible for this to have occurred without a god. Tell me what DNA without a god behind it, how it would look. I how, what would, what would we expect to see in biology? Let him answer. Yeah. Oh, I just want to make sure he's understanding what I'm saying. I, I do not know what uh, DNA would look like if it came about naturalistically, and neither does any atheist or scientist at all, because we haven't been able to demonstrate any natural way that information could arise on its own. And I think information you don't have any qualifications. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, you're saying that it must be natural, it must be, it must require a supernatural source, and it's impossible for it to, uh, you said it's impossible for it to arise by naturalistic uh, means because we haven't seen any naturalistic means by which this could happen. And that is, by definition, an argument from ignorance. No, I don't it, think so. By, think yes. by John, by definition, it's, it's identical to saying it is impossible for there to be a black swan because we have not seen a black swan. And not only are you wrong about whether or not we've seen naturalistic method, mechanisms for the reproduction of uh, uh, information in the DNA, but you have, made, you have begun with an argument from ignorance. How do you know that it's not possible for these things to occur naturally? Because there is no natural mechanism. That is an argument from ignorance. Yeah. That is the fallacy argument from ignorance by definition. Can you show a natural mechanism that can I don't create? have to, John. Your assertion is that it's impossible. And that is something you have to justify. And if you justify okay. it, if you justify it by claiming we've never seen it, which, by the way, you can go talk to some scientists about why you're wrong. But if you justify it by that, you have, by definition, committed the argument from ignorance fallacy. So please, okay, without a fallacy, digress. without a fallacy, justify your assertion that this is impossible. Well, let me digress then. No, I would no, say no, 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 John. No, 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 no. You, you, we got can, it. can you demonstrate your assertion without a fallacy, yes or no? Yes. Then do it, I think please. We can demonstrate that information cannot come from outside of an intelligent source. The, the, I think we have okay. demonstrated that. Please demonstrate that. Please demonstrate it. Okay. Open your cell phone. Go to the text message. Oh, the and, watchmaker argument. And do nothing. How how do how is that how is that confirmation that it can't happen? Do you have any reason to believe that now, you're, now you're shifting the burden of proof to cover for your argument from ignorance? My question was, can you demonstrate your assertion without resorting to a fallacy? I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a fallacy. Just you're wrong. You think yes. that it is. The, yeah, the, you're wrong. <laughs> you have said this is not possible, and your argument for it began with an argument from ignorance. We've never seen an example of it happening. And then, when challenged on that, it went to, well... Have you ever seen in it, this happen? Open up your cell phone. Have you ever seen, you know, inf yeah. it's all, you've shifted the burden of proof. You've got an argument from ignorance. You don't understand the fallacies. Um, I understand what you're saying, but I don't think you, you're getting what I'm trying to get across, which is. Uh, no, I think we do. I, I, I think it's just that you're not recognizing the fallacies that you're making. Okay. Do you believe it's more rational to believe that information came on it uh, naturalistically or that a mind has to be behind information? What's more rational to you? What's more rational to me? Well, we'd have to define terms about what exactly you're meaning by information. But considering that we have an abundance of evidence for naturalistic pro, uh, uh, processes and, so zero, and, and zero evidence for supernaturalistic processes, and by the way, could not have confirmation of supernaturalistic processes because they are outside the bound of investigation by definition, then it all is always more plausible to accept 
a naturalistic explanation over a supernaturalistic one. It comes down to what David Hume said, which is that the wise man apportions his belief to the evidence. And the evidence so far is in favor of naturalistic solutions to these issues. But so that, that is there, there are several yeah. scientists and, and who would disagree also. I don't care. There's several callers who disagree with me. There are scientists who think the world's flat. There are scientists who think the germ theory of disease is wrong. I don't care. And, and, and a few minutes ago when you, and, and a few minutes ago when you essentially admitted to me, no, you cannot give an example of what DNA would produce, what biological organisms would look like through DNA uh, in in what you think a non God designed DNA world would look like. Right there, you've essentially admitted that your premise cannot withstand scientific falsifiability, and that's kind of the end. I mean, that's sort of it for you in terms of that, that line of argument. I mean, when you admitted that you couldn't come up with an example, that kind of shut that whole thing down. Well, can so you all this example, since then has just kind of been a waste of time. Can you give an example of any information process coming about naturally? I can give examples of every single DNA, every single example no, of this. Is, D, this is it's ridiculous. It's like on. where where in any of the uh, DNA research, and, and, and I, I don't believe for a minute that you've actually studied any of this at a professional level. But really? if there is, has so, been anything yes. in gen, anything in genetics where you, the the actual peer reviewed scientific evidence says this is not explicable unless we have resource to some sort of external, transcendent, godly, supernatural, whatever word you want to call it, uh, well, like basis. If, I mean, if there's, if there's one example of that in the scientific literature, John, yeah, John, but, first but of there all, are none. First of all, your question is a shifting of the burden of proof. Yeah. You're basically saying, hey, can you show me how in information can, can arise without uh, supernatural influence? Well, no, because I can't demonstrate conclusively that there wasn't supernatural influence because I can't test for that. However, we do know of naturalistic systems that do produce what we identify as information, the DNA replication being one of them. There's no the evidence. There's, there's no, there's no, John, there's no evidence of a God reaching in and manipulating the process of, re of replicating DNA, is there? Yeah, this whole time that you... Hang on, is there? I believe that... I don't care what you believe, John. I do like, care. But my question here is not about what you believe. It's do we have evidence of a God manipulating this otherwise naturalistic process? What do you mean by evidence? I'm asking you. You're the one who believes it. Because, every, I, because all well, throughout hang this... Hang on. Hang on. Uh, okay. You don't... I'll if I ask you, John, quickly. John, if I ask you, do we have evidence... Your answer shouldn't be what kind of evidence. It should be yes, we have evidence of this kind. Well, I believe we do. But you it don't. doesn't so matter what your beliefs so are. Well, through, ground, through, our, through uh, John, throughout this entire conversation, you've been trying getting on us about what. Well, show me the naturalistic mechanism. Show me the latch. And at no time have you ever described what you think the supernatural mechanisms are. What yes, mechanisms would she look? How do you how, confirm? All, this? all you have done is said, oh, it's it's the, as Matt said, it's the classic argument from ignorance. You can't show that there aren't supernatural mechanisms. But you're getting on us about no, what no, are no, the natural, no. what possible evidence is there for natural mechanisms in DNA when you haven't even defined the parameters of how the supernatural mechanisms would work. And not only that, you've admitted that you can't. You you have you admitted that you could not give a falsifiable description of what a non-God designed what non-God designed DNA would look like. You admitted that you couldn't that, do that. I can give a falsifiable description. Yes. If at any time we discover any information process that came about naturalistically, I think that would falsify the entire idea of but, but you're, 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 you, that yeah. statement right there, not uh, apart from being uh, again an argument from ignorance, implies that you know what you know the difference between what a naturalistic mechanism would look like and the godly supernatural mechanism. If that's the no, case, the then explain the, mind. explain the whoa, godly supernatural whoa. mechanism. The god it, mechanism is a mind. See, that's yeah. just, that's you talking out your ass now. You don't even know no, what no, that no. means. God, it's, god is a mind. That's like saying the universe is a beautiful flower and it wants to hug me. You sound like a hippie yeah. now. All right. I mean, yeah. that's that is a that is a completely content-free explanation. God is no, a mind. Not. God. Oh. oh, look. Okay. So we tend to explain things in terms of other things that we understand. Uh, you you yeah. cannot you cannot offer God as an explanation because God has no explanatory power. It is. I didn't say God one time. 
I said in We know what you're talking about. Let's didn't not you be say dishonest. didn't you say God was a mine? Well, you said God, and you said, what was the mechanism? Okay. I said, well, the mechanism was the mind. Stop, John. Yeah. Stop. You're, you're just Stop. Like, John, do you believe in God? I believe in a creator. Whatever you want to call him. Okay. okay. John, do you, John, would you be okay with the word God as a label for your creator that you believe in? Sure. Why not? Good. Bye. All right. All right. If you're not going to be honest. Okay, here's the thing. I've done a bunch of debates, and, and recently uh, JT and I did a team debate against a father and son Catholic team on the subject of morality. And they came out at the beginning uh, before the debate and decided that they did not want to defend the morality that they actually believe in, mm -hmm. but wanted to defend a deistic morality. Um, and that's fine. That's their prerogative if they want to lose a debate by appealing to something that is absolutely devoid of any moral content, like a non-interventionist God. That's their prerogative. I'm a little tired of people trying to pretend like they're going to defend something, but not defend what they actually believe. And if you're going to nitpick, if you believe that there is a supernatural creator, and you're going to nitpick over whether or not somebody calls it God, when you cannot offer evidence for this proposition, you will be disconnected from the show. Okay? I have no interest in time wasters and dishonest arguments. There was a lot of back and forth and a lot of, of heat and a lot of I said this and you said this and no we didn't. Here's the simple, simple assessment of that entire call. Hey, I don't see how information could arise without a supernatural explanation. Well, so far the only thing we've found is naturalistic causes for these things. Ah, but you don't know that there's not a supernatural element to it. You're correct. I do not know and cannot demonstrate that the supernatural is impossible. All I can do is come up with descriptions um, of things based on naturalistic processes. Aha! Therefore, God exists. Well, you can't prove that he doesn't. Well, I don't care to prove that he doesn't. Ah, then you're not an atheist. And we're back to square one again. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. Why doesn't that same argument occur for other things? I can't prove that God didn't fiddle with the water molecules in my water cup here. Um, can't prove it. Why don't you point to my cup of water and say, you can't prove that God didn't make that water colder for you. Mm -hmm. Therefore, God. Drag it in my garage, all kinds of things. When you take these arguments, you, you, you muddle around in things that you don't understand and aspects of science that I'm not qualified to actually comment on and wouldn't um, or would, would try not to. Um, just think about it. what is the same argument if you substitute something else? After all, according to you, you've got this creator who did everything. By the way, if you believe in this creator God, uh, okay, fine. We see no reason to agree with you. Um, but I want to know about the other beliefs. What do you think this creator God does or did? Yeah. It's my same impatient with the logical proofs. You know, tag and, uh, well, you know, Callum and what have you. It's like the people arguing those. Is that really the reason they became Christians? I, I can't recall from the days when I went, into, when I went to church. Well, I have, I, have a, I have a little problem with that, and that is that, I, you know, for example, I am convinced nobody's ever become a Christian because of TAG. Yeah. However, if TAG turns out to be a logically valid and sound argument for the existence of God, it doesn't matter how they came around to believing. Mm -hmm. it, the argument itself deserves to be evaluated. On its own terms. To determine, sure. yes. Yeah. Um, the thing is, when you ask people why they believe, like, for example, William Lane Craig uses the Kalam cosmological argument um, almost exclusively, uh, with, with a little, you know, add-ons and everything else. But he's a believer because of the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Now, I've seen atheists criticize him, saying, well, you don't believe because of Kalam. You believe because of the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Um, I wouldn't recommend criticizing him for that, because it's entirely possible that somebody could become convinced of something by the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, if that sort of thing exists, and yet, still, the argument that is most convincing and compelling is one that doesn't involve how they became... Because you can be convinced of things for bad reasons. Oh, sure, sure. The, the sort of arguments that might bolster one's belief is, I guess, the yeah. ones I would use. Well, sure. I, I, you could, that's, I think that is a valid way to look at it. But you know, getting back to the whole subject of you know, just wanting to argue or at least get explanations from believers based on why they really do believe... Um, when you get around the whole use of, say, logical proofs and say, well, why do you believe? I've had Christians apply, well, I had X and X and X experience, sure. but, you, but 
you would never believe it. Yeah. And then my question is, well, then why did you? You know, because I'm sure that you're not suggesting in this conversation we're having that you're any less rational or intelligent than I am. Uh, and I don't see myself that. I see myself as being a rather average guy. Well, some of so them then, would hold that yeah. if you had the experience, you would believe it too. But until you have that experience, you're going to have to rely on these other things. Yeah. Which raises another question. Uh, it, it's not just about whether or not they're defending the God they believe in or the mm -hmm. reasons that they believe. It's when you dig beneath the surface. Now, it could be the fact that John is just a deist who believes in a creator who's perhaps non-intervening. I don't know. We never get that far because it's full of fallacies and assertions about what atheism is. Yeah. yeah. Um, may, maybe someday John will tell us what he believes other than that there's a creator and that information requires a creative mind. Um, but the fact that people don't always defend what they actually believe is kind of separate. It's entirely possible that individuals... I don't want to say entirely possible because now we're making a claim about the <laughs> causes. But you could be convinced um, for one reason and that that reason doesn't exist for somebody else. For example, um, I am convinced that my wife is at home knitting right now. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm convinced of that because I live with her, know what she does and what she told me she would do. You can't possibly have that same justification and so I would need to argue some, some other way to get sure. there. Uh, but by and large, when we have these discussions, I don't know that we ever get beyond the ground floor. Well, we don't, because I think that uh, a lot of it has to do with just an unwillingness to, to recognize and correct fallacies in one's argument. And I think a lot of it also has to do with the very human trait that people... Quite often, you know, it's, you, you argue to win. You don't really argue to, to get to actual facts and truth sometimes. And, and that can really be the case when you hit somebody with a mistake in their arguing that they go, uh-oh, but then they, you know, for ego or whatever other reasons, yeah. they don't want to admit it. And I've been guilty of that in the past, and I try to fix that myself. But it's a human trait, right? And so that's why every time you point out a clear uh, and <laughs> easily definable fallacy in their point of view, they just kind of come back with, well, no, uh because what I'm really saying is this. And yeah. then they say it. In, and so that is the stumbling block that you run into. It's like if you can't get over that speed bump, you're never going to get anywhere in the discussion. But, wow.